I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about, does my ex secretly care what I'm doing? So something we're all wondering. You know, when you're going through the breakup and somebody's being cruel to you, they're mean, they don't wanna to talk to you, it really feels like they don't care. It really feels like they don't care what happens in your life and you oftentimes question if they ever cared about you, you know, and you hear that in the calls, right? Where people are telling you like, I, I don't even know if they ever loved me. Mm -hmm. Your whole reality is distorted based on how they're acting now after the breakup and they can be so cold. It's almost like they're a completely different person mm -hmm. versus before they were texting you every day. How's your day been? How are you doing? What did you do today? How yep. was your weekend? Now all of a sudden they don't want to hear a word from you and you're thinking, do they even care? Yeah, a lot of times you'll fantasize like, I, I remember even like many years ago thinking like, if I got hit by a car, would they even care? Oh yeah, and some people do get to that extreme. Yeah. They go to, you know, I'm, I'm gonna kill myself sometimes, they can get suicidal, they can get into fake accidents, and we've heard other coaches <laughs> talk about this, where they suggest getting into a fake... <laughs> I don't remember that one. <laughs> there was one time where we were talking about this. <laughs> Getting into a fake car accident or something to uh -huh. gain your ex's sympathy. Oh, gosh. So people will go to extremes to get that sort of attention and to get that validation of, wow, yes, my ex does care what's happening in my life. I am important to someone. Yeah. And if you're ever feeling like, you know, so depressed that you're considering suicide or something like that, please check in your area for help locally. You know, there are services available. There are hotlines available. Obviously, we are all around the world, and so we have people all around the world. So please look that up. Contact a friend, somebody you care about, a family member. It's never worth hurting yourself over. Right, and we talk about it because it is real, and it does happen, and we want to normalize it. I don't think it's talked enough about. I yep. think people have shame for feeling suicidal based off of what's happening to their relationships because yeah. people tend to just brush it off. Oh, just get over him. Oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, honey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. When in reality, they don't understand how deeply affected we are emotionally. Yeah, yeah. So, it hurts. Mm -hmm. It really hurts. And when you see your ex being so cold towards you, they don't want to talk to you. They give you short answers. Uh, they just... They don't even want to have a conversation with you. And that's, that's so like confusing because it's like, w last week you told me you loved me and now you don't even want to tell me why you want to leave. Mm -hmm. It just, it hurts. Like, it's like, how can you do that? Like, how can you, how can we be in this place? It's a big shock. And what we as humans tend to do is we see something, we perceive it, and then we make our own assumptions about how another person is feeling, about another person's experience. Mm -hmm. So we say all this to say just because your ex is acting super cold, just because they are acting completely different towards you, we can't assume what their emotional process is like. That's right. That's a big point. Because, you know, even if they have their guard up and they're not showing you that they care, it doesn't matter that they're not being affected by things as well and you know they're keeping that to themselves mm -hmm. which is often what a lot of people will do so you know what often happens is somebody ends a relationship and we get desperate mm -hmm. right we want to continue that connection and we feel like if we lose that connection we're gonna die without them it just feels that painful and so you're making these bids to connect with them and they're like openly just cold to you like no i don't want to talk and, and they'll they'll get aggressive sometimes mm -hmm. towards you like shutting you down in the bid to connect with them and and so 
when you're in that state and in that place, it really feels like, how could they possibly care? Right? Mm -hmm. If they're this mean, how could they possibly care? You're thinking, Craig, how can you think they're going to possibly care when they were mean to me? They said they were going to call the police on me. They said if I show up to their house again, they're going to get a restraining order. When people are going through it, they don't know how to handle it well themselves either. Mm -hmm. And it also depends on how you try to connect. If you are putting all your cards out there and letting your ex know that you are pursuing them every minute of the day, then that's not going to allow them any space to wonder. Yep. So it also depends on how you decide to make these bids for connection. Mm -hmm. Many of you are just putting it all out there on the table, letting them know that you are pursuing them every minute of the day, and that increases yep. their pressure their feeling of obligation to work things out. It makes them feel guilty. It doesn't really elicit that feeling of desire for them. Mm -hmm. And so while they still might care on an emotional level, they are attached to you. They don't want to see you suffering if they did care for you. At the same time, they are trying to detach. Yeah. They're trying to sever that relationship. And that is an extremely difficult process. It's many different confusing emotions existing at the same time. That's what we want you to understand. Yeah. But they're going to appear like they are just adamant in their decision and they don't care about you. And just this wall mm -hmm. where they're not going to display how they're feeling inside to you so you can try and connect with them. They, they want to look like they're kind of over it so it kind of discourages you and allows them that space for trying to connect with them they need that space from you mm -hmm. exactly and they might even go to the extreme of saying you should date other people or even suggesting certain people that you should connect with oh yeah to the most extreme and so it really makes you think, wow, they, they really don't care. In fact, they want me to find another connection. Mm -hmm. It can be really confusing to hear that from an ex. Or even when they will say, you know, I, I'm sure you're going to find the right one. Oh, I know. That's brutal. When do you hear somebody say, uh, oh, you're going to find somebody that's better for you. Uh, you're like, no, I need somebody worse. I need you. Right? And you're thinking, <laughs> do they really mean that? Yeah. Do they really mean that they want to see me with someone else? Well, the, the interesting thing is that they, in that moment, they do mean it until you really do start to date somebody and then they're like, no, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying you should fake that and start dating other people to make them jealous because that often backfires. You want, if you do decide to date other people at that time, you want it to be natural and it's because you're really wanting that, not to try and make your ex jealous. That will backfire. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, don't do it. Right. It's got to be authentic. Like you've truly authentically gotten to that place, healed and kind of over things. And then they find out somehow that you're dating other people. Please don't try to make them jealous. It makes things worse. Don't underestimate the power of space. Yes. That too. Mm -hmm. That space will allow them time to wonder what's happening, to be curious about what you're doing, it raises their anxiety versus if you are constantly reaching out, constantly posting about mm -hmm. what you're doing, telling other people to communicate with them what you're doing, mm -hmm. it relieves them of, of that curiosity. It really does because you need that space, that distance for them to kind of wonder and create this own story and narrative of what's going on in your life, right? Where they're thinking, well, you know, he's probably dating so-and-so that he was friends with because she yeah. always seemed to like him. And, and that allow that eno is enough to allow them to create th in this void a story where they're going to lose you. And you don't have to fake those kind of things because I really believe in kind of allowing it to happen mm -hmm. naturally. Right. I will say if they are avoidant, that this process might be a little bit different. Those with more avoidant attachment styles can compartmentalize very, very well, can mm -hmm. suppress things very well. But so only for so long. Correct. <laughs> correct. So especially in the beginning, you'll notice that it seems like they uh, have forgotten about you out of sight, out of mind. But over time, those things do catch up to even the most avoidant of folks. Now, the interesting thing about the avoidance is that a lot of times they're like, I was fine with the breakup, I was okay, and out of nowhere, I just I just couldn't stop thinking about them. And, and so those feelings that you get initially after the breakup, 
sometimes it hits them at like month five. Or if they start dating somebody else. And I can distinctly remember personally in my life when my exes started dating other people. Mm -hmm. Now that was a moment to see them in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it was so reality distorting. It was so confusing. You see them in a different light and you also see them being desired by somebody else. Yep. And you're like, what is going on here? So all of that to say that, you know, there might be a defining moment later on that is unpredictable, that we cannot fake, but happens naturally that mm -hmm. will impact your ex and cause them to reconsider. I just did a call with a guy uh, within the last few days where he had been broken up. He was the dumper. He was an avoidant dumper. And he was totally fine with the breakup. He said one day out of nowhere, I think it was like four or five months in, he was like, I fell in love with her again. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't talked and he was devastated and he was like it was just happening to him and he had just been broken up mm. with. So that happens where, you know, they push it away. They don't think about it. They try not to think about it. Oh, this is the right thing. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, the avoidance like to sweep things under the rug. Mm -hmm. But eventually it usually gets them. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And in that space, it is so powerful. And even personally, again, I can think of other experiences where I had been the dumper, I had ended a relationship. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until later that it was my ex that was asking for space from me. Mm -hmm. And that drove me nuts. <laughs> I remember <laughs> I was that. Like, what is happening here? And it made me so curious about what he was doing. I would ask our mutual friends constantly, have you heard from him? And I was trying so hard to not look obsessed. I was trying so hard to not look hurt since I was the dumper. And I felt that responsibility to have moved on, to be okay with it, because I had made that decision, even if I was still missing him at times and at the time let's make this clear too at the time of that breakup you did not care you were oh done gosh. you were yeah. done you were like nope i'm done yeah. i'm happy i remember you laughing mm -hmm. do you remember we had a conversation and you were literally <laughs> laughing about how like you felt free and you were just kind of happy i was happy. like everything is fine yeah and 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 then mm -hmm. the minute he was like not he asked for space for you you were just the anxiety mm -hmm. completely overwhelmed you right Right. And also so much time had passed that I didn't know what was happening in his life anymore. Mm -hmm. I felt like, okay, the person that I dumped might be a different person. I don't know who they are anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that did spike my anxiety. Yep. So just an insight on what it's like for the dumper, for somebody who ends the relationship <laughs> that you don't know everything that's going on. Yeah. And that's why we're always telling you guys, give the person space, let these things happen naturally. In the case with her ex, it was a natural thing. It wasn't like, you know, it was this planned strategy. It mm -hmm. was just he naturally wanted space from you. And then it became overwhelming that you now suddenly had to deal with a lot more space than he wanted. Right. And, right. Th and that's what we're always trying to teach you guys. That can happen, but you got to stop the chasing. Handwritten letters, grand gestures, good reminder texts. Clean slate messages. All of those are you making bids to connect. There is no space created with those things because you're trying to connect. You don't do those things naturally when you're wanting space. You do those things when you're trying to connect. Mm -hmm. And so you're wanting to find out if they care. They need to show you through the behaviors that they're doing, like watching your stories. Mm -hmm. This Sometime, is a big one. Sometimes your ex won't watch stories for months and all of a sudden they're watching your stories. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what, what is going on? And they here? watch them within a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're the first ones to watch. Yeah, them. you're shocked. Uh, asking friends and family about yeah, you. That's something that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asking mutual friends constantly, have you heard from him? And trying to play it off as if I was asking a casual question, but <laughs> I'm sure. He owes me money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? He still has a Tupperware of mine. <laughs> yeah. He has my green sock. <laughs> If somebody could please find out if he's still in the state. <laughs> please. And, and and if he's single, by, by chance. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> With my green sock. Right. So they might ask friends and family. And you might hear from your friends and family that they've been asking about you. Oh, yeah. They'll contact yeah. their friends and family. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of you guys have had your ex contact your friends and family and you're like what mm -hmm. he keeps calling my grandmother <laughs> especially if your family was very close with your ex mm -hmm. you know 
Yep. So that's another way to sh that they're showing that they care. One thing I want to mention too is that many couples, once they do reunite, it is one of the most common questions. So what has life been like since we broke up? And oftentimes the ex, the partner that you separated from wants to know if you had been dating other people, if you have explored your options. So in case many of you are thinking, well, my ex really doesn't care, mm -hmm. you know, many couples during the time they reunite, they have that conversation and that conversation does impact them. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel some type of way to hear that their ex has been dating or hasn't been dating or what has been going on during that time. Yeah, it's so true. And a lot of times you'll be shocked to hear your ex say, I thought about you every day. I was always wondering where you at, what you were doing. Sometimes they will actually completely admit everything. Mm -hmm. And they will say, I was watching your stories. I was looking at other people that you were following. I was worried you were going out with so-and-so. They don't mind. They're, they'll just be completely vulnerable and saying all these things. And it leaves you kind of shocked. But it tells you that they secretly did care all along when you thought they didn't. Right, right. And a big crux of this message, too, that we don't want you to forget is that what you are doing is important and it's important for you. I know we've been talking about how your ex may or may not care mm -hmm. about what you're doing, but what you're doing is important. Mm -hmm. Of course, we touched on we don't want you to intentionally make your ex jealous or to do any type of manipulative tactics to try to get them to reach out or to instigate some type of contact with them. Mm -hmm. We don't suggest that. Just remember that the time that you do have right now is important. So really, whether your ex does care about what you're doing or not, it's kind of arbitrary. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Is it important? Is it obsessing over your ex or is it genuinely reflecting on your relationships, learning about how to improve your attachment style, learning about relationship skills and how to be a better partner? So that's really what we want you to focus on. I know we've really dived deep into your ex's experience. We want you to understand some of their perspective for you to have some empathy about their process too. Hopefully there's some comfort in knowing that they also have to grieve the relationship. They also have curiosities and, and concerns and wonders too. And despite how they're acting and behaving, as cold as they may be, deep down they do care. And obviously we're not talking about every situation because there are extremes and I don't want people to be like, my, my ex. Sometimes, yes, there are people with personality disorders and narcissists and stuff like that out there. Mm -hmm. However, for the most part, deep down, your ex does care about you, even if they're secretly keeping it to themselves. Mm -hmm. So I know it hurts, but... You'll see if you trust the process, you really focused on the personal growth and they come back and you're not trying to be manipulative, you're trying to act like an adult, a lot of times uh, these answers will come out right from their mouths naturally. Wait and see, but you have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. And you also have to act as if, what if whatever I'm doing is the most important thing? What if they do care? What if it does make a difference? You know, would they like to see that I am working on how to make things better? So it might be a strange way of looking at it, but what you are doing does have an impact on you, on your future relationships. So take this time seriously. Take care of your mental health. Absolutely. Take care of yourselves. Absolutely. Uh, so hopefully this has been helpful to you to understand what's going on with your ex. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can get it on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. Mm -hmm.